Nissan's Navara is the powerful face of modern day pickups. Developed from car-like rather than commercial underpinnings, it was one of the first models of its kind that you really could, with a few compromises, use as single vehicle transport. This revised version gets pokier, more efficient engines with a potent V6 diesel option, a smarter look and an extra dose of high-tech. Try one and you realise just how far pickups have come. Pickups used to be utilitarian things, or at least they were until the lifestyle set picked up on them as fashionable outdoor activity transport and the prosperously blue-collar self-employed began using them as all-purpose only cars. Both groups essentially wanted a load-carrying car rather than a commercial vehicle, and so the modern pickup was born. The market's initial stab at this concept simply dressed up its existing products with bull bars, two-tone paint jobs and fancy cabins. Models like Nissan's 2001 first-generation Navara, a tinseled-up version of their standard pickup, were the result. Not good enough. Uh, models uh, built essentially to carry packages were never going to particularly appeal to people. So the company's Japanese engineers worked at it from the other way round, starting with a clean sheet of paper and, as far as they could, creating a pickup from the basis of a car. The Spanish-built result first reached these shores back in 2005, when a design first created to be a lifestyle family 4x4 called the Nissan Pathfinder was reborn as the second generation Nissan Navara pickup we know today. It's been a great success, Europe's favourite pickup since launch, but a design now facing a whole host of much tougher competitors from every brand in this market. Hence the need for this revised version with a smarter look, uh, more efficient engines that produce less CO2 and better fuel consumption and optional state-of-the-art high-tech equipment. Let's check it out. The Navara sits high on its 17-inch wheels and chunky tyres, so you'll literally need to climb up behind the wheel. Now once you do and get moving, you'll find that in terms of car-like handling, this is pretty much state-of-the-art as far as pickups are concerned. Now that doesn't mean that your Navara is going to handle like a conventional family four-door, but it is a world removed from previous generation pickups, and it's not that far off the clunkier passenger 4x4s on the market. Nissan's engineers would doubtless like to have achieved an even higher standard, but were ultimately limited by this car's basic constraints of construction. Uh, the ladder frame chassis, the rear leaf springs, and the rigid live rear axle. All of which means that this car can be a bit bouncy if you try and hustle it through a set of tight corners. Nothing too disconcerting though, and obviously it calms down quite a bit when you've got a bit of weight in the back. You can, um, in any case, counter this to some extent by switching out of two-wheel drive and into 4x4 high mode, something possible to do on the fly via the rotary knob just in front of the gear stick here. Going further and switching into 4x4 low puts you at the wheel of something that really feels pretty unstoppable. There's a ground clearance of 228 millimetres that facilitates a wading depth of up to 450 millimetres. And when things get gnarly, you'll appreciate an approach angle of up to 30 degrees, a departure angle of up to 24 degrees, and a ramp over angle of up to 22 degrees. You'll be able to climb an incline of up to 39 degrees, pretty steep, and uh, enjoy a maximum lateral inclination of, well, nearly 50 degrees. So it can cut the mustard on the mucky stuff. But this is also a vehicle that on major roads can be a surprisingly uh, quiet and relaxed cruiser. Now much of this is down to the excellence of the 2.5 litre DCI diesel engine that almost all Navara owners choose. Uh, in this revised form, 11% uh, or 19 PS more powerful at 190 PS. Now that's quite an output for a pickup, making this one of the fastest of the breed available. Rest to 60, taking 11.1 .1 seconds on the way to a top speed limited by garden shed aerodynamics to 112 miles an hour. More importantly, there's more torque these days, more pulling power. 
47 newton meters of it to be exact, uh, making possible a total of 450 newton meters. And that in turn makes possible a prodigious 3,000 kilogram uh, towing limit, usefully more than most obvious rivals. If pulling power is everything though, this Nissan is able to offer another option, and this one virtually unique in this segment, that of V6 power. The unit in question is a three litre DCI diesel that uh, propels this vehicle from rest to 60 in just 9.3 seconds on the way to a top speed of 121 miles an hour and puts out so much uh, torque, uh, um, 550 newton meters of it, that the pulling power has to be channeled through a seven speed standard automatic gearbox. That kind of capability facilitates a beefier towing limit of up to 3,500 kilograms. What you can't tow with one of these, in other words, you probably shouldn't be trying to tow anyway. With a look based on that of the massive US market Titan pickup, this Navara is no shrinking violet in the styling stakes, and the most recent minor visual tweaks have done nothing to change that. There's a revised grille, a reprofiled front bumper, and a sleeker bonnet, all accounting for a length increase of 80 millimeters, bringing the total vehicle length of this double cab pickup version to nearly 5.3 meters. So you're certainly gonna want those optional rear parking sensors. There's a revised bumper design at the rear too, with squared off edges supposed to offer up a more stable, tougher appearance. That huge size means there's plenty of cabin space, even if you go for the halfway house king cab variant with its backwards opening doors and occasional rear seats. But that's a bit of a compromise, so with good reason, given that there's no two-door version, most Navara buyers choose the double cab model that I'm driving here. It's wide body and over 1.5 meters of cabin length mean that there's plenty of room for a couple of adults across the back seat, or even three people, all of whom will get proper three-point belts. It's an interior that's been smartened up in recent times with better quality switch gear, clearer instrumentation, revised door trims, nicer seat fabric, um, and the option of the Nissan Connect Premium SatNav infotainment system that I've got here. It's also a very practical cabin with a storage box on the center console and a decently sized storage bin between the front seats and door bins that can now happily hold an A3 uh, roadmap atlas as well as a one liter drinks bottle. The door bins in the rear can now accommodate something as large as a standard Nissan first aid kit. And there are plenty of spaces for coins, cups and cards, as well as uh, a neat sunglasses holder that folds out of the roof and a double glove box in front of the front seat passenger. It also helps that the seats can be folded into various positions to increase the storage capacity. On a mid-spec model like this one, you can pull up the seat base at the rear to access hidden storage compartments that would be very useful for carrying, say, valuables. You can also specify a fold flat front passenger seat for longish items that won't fit in the cargo bay. Excluding the dreaded VAT that most businesses will be able to claim back, most Navara models in the mainstream lineup range between uh, somewhere between 17 and a half and 23 and a half thousand pounds. And that means that you'll be able to comfortably undercut most rivals, say uh, 175 brake horsepower Mitsubishi L200 or 163 brake horsepower Volkswagen Amarok. And you'll certainly be able to save quite a bit on the kind of 200 brake horsepower Ford Ranger that you'd need to compete with this car on performance. Within the Navara price span, you'll find both king cab and double cab body styles, with most buyers quite happy to pay the 800 pounds or so premium necessary for more versatile double cab motoring. Bear in mind though, that if your towing needs lead you to consider the top of the range V6 diesel variant, then you'll pay quite a premium for it. It's only available in top spec double cab form with prices up around the 30,000 pound mark. 
Whichever king cab or double cab version you choose with whichever diesel engine, 2.5 or 3 litre DCI, you'll get yourself one of the toughest and most capable pickups on the market. All variants fitted with four wheel drive and all with the kind of features that you'd have a right to expect for this kind of money. Things like 17 inch alloy wheels, uh, side steps, front fog lights, um, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, um, power heated mirrors, electric front windows, dual zone air conditioning, uh, an MP3 compatible CD stereo with USB and iPod connectivity and an alarm. The mid-spec version I've got here adds further niceties like roof rails, headlamp washers, rear privacy glass, auto headlamps and wipers, leather seats, an auto dimming rear view mirror, cruise control and a trip computer. At this level, you also get the option of Nissan's clever combined music and information system, the Connect Premium setup. Now, this uh, is driven by a 40 gigabyte hard disk and includes HDD sat-nav, a DVD player, a reverse parking camera, and a music box server that's got a 9.3 gigabyte capacity and could hold up to 300 CDs. Now, if I was considering this, I'd also want to consider the premium Bose sound system to go with it. As for safety, well, I can't help thinking that ESP stability control should always be standard on this kind of car. It is on this pickup. Um, you also get uh, anti-lock braking with electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective and brake assist to help in emergency stops. Plus there are twin front side and curtain airbags, as well as anti-whiplash head restraints and Isofix child seat fastenings. You also get a proper three-point seat belt for the middle rear seat passenger. Toyota Hilux, take note. So how practical will this Navara prove to be in day-to-day -day use? Well, the pokier engines mean that it'll be able to uh, manage a heftier payload for a start. Anything from 1,130 kilograms to 1,250 kilograms, depending on the model that you choose. But how bulky could your load be? Well, let's pull down the uh, tough tailgate with its large centrally mounted handle. It's also lockable and find out. Now you can hold it in place horizontally if you want to carry longer items that you don't want to lean against the back of the cab. There's a, a ladder frame, a cargo restraint frame for that on the options list if you want it. You can't put the uh, tailgate right down though because the uh, large bumper with its built-in step rather gets in the way. Once you do get stuff in, the low bay is usefully long. 1,861 millimeters in the king cab version or 1,511 millimeters in the double cab that I have here. It's uh, usefully wide too, uh, 1,560 millimeters in width, narrowing to 1,130 millimeters between the wheel arches, but that's still enough for a standard size Euro pallet. And there's 457 millimeters of loading height. Now, I'm not really sure why you'd want to compromise all this space by fitting the optional streamlined hardback Xbox pickup cover. But if you do, then you'll find uh, a rather reduced capacity of just 1.8 cubic meters inside it. A much better option, I think, is the very cleverly thought out C-channel load lashing system. Now, this consists of five cargo rails, two on the cargo bed floor, and one each on each of the three fixed sides of the load box. Now to these can be attached self-locking cleats, which provide uh, lashing points uh, around the load box for things like ropes. As for running costs, well, you probably already know if you're shopping in this market that because pickups are classified as commercial vehicles, they attract a low benefiting kind rating from the tax man. Now that loophole has uh, been closed in recent years for those classified as employees, but it continues for the self-employed who can, of course, also if registered, uh, claim back the VAT on the purchase price. Now that goes some way to offsetting the slightly thirsty showing you get at the pumps from the DCI diesel engines uh, that are Euro 5 compatible and have slightly lower NOx emissions. In the manual 2.5 DCI that I've been driving here, you can expect to get 33.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, a figure that falls to 31.8 miles to the gallon if you opt for it with the slightly slashy five-speed auto gearbox.
The V6 DCI manages 29.7 miles to the gallon. What about CO2 emissions? Well, you'll get 222 grams per kilometre in the manual 2.5 DCI, a figure that falls to 235 grams per kilometre if you opt for it with the auto gearbox, and rises to 250 grams per kilometre for the V6 diesel. What else? Servicing. Uh, every 18,000 miles for the 2.5 DCI, or every 20,000 miles for the V6. Uh, you get uh, insurance groupings between 11 and 12 for mainstream 2.5 litre models and a decent three year 60,000 mile mechanical warranty, a year of roadside assistance, uh, a three year paintwork warranty and a 12 year anti-perforation corrosion warranty. The pickup sector continues to punch above its weight in the UK, thanks both to advantageous tax breaks and the excellence of products like this Nissan. This is now one of the older contenders in this segment, but it remains one of the very best. Just as rivals started to approach the class-leading power of its diesel engines, a package of mid-term revisions have lifted this Navara further clear of its rivals in this respect. Which is why whenever people ask me what uh, model I'd have in this market given the choice, the Navara remains one of my key starting points. It's Europe's bestseller for a reason, and a powerful argument for mixing business with pleasure. If you're buying a vehicle of this type, you have to consider it. Simple as that.